APM Garden demonstrates a variety of cultural control methods. Uh, cultural control has to do with how we grow or cultivate our plants. It begins with the plants that we select for our garden, proper planting techniques and proper plant care to maintain the health of the plants through fertilization and irrigation. One aspect of cultural control that's as old as gardening itself is the use of companion planting. With companion planting, we draw upon plant associations and we get a benefit for one plant from planting another close by. Now a lot of this is based on just uh, history passed down from one gardener to another and historical observations. There's not a lot of scientific data yet on companion planting, but researchers are starting to look at that more closely. So I'm sure we'll see some of that in the, in the near future. Now one of the really uh, common and maybe well-known ways that we draw benefits from our plants for another plant is the use of beans and other legumes to fix nitrogen from the air into a form that the plants can take up from the soil. And so beans are often planted next to heavy feeding crops like corn uh, to provide that available nitrogen. Uh, we see this in the Native American tradition of the Three Sisters where the beans are planted to feed the corn as well as the squash. Another form of companion planting is biochemical plant associations or biochemical plant pest suppression. And in this case, certain plants produce chemicals in their roots or their foliage that affects the behavior of an insect pest, either repelling it or suppressing it in the garden. And one of the plants that we really uh, is well known for that is basil. Every, every garden should have basil plants. It's uh, one of the power horses. Um, I selected a purple foliage variety just for the aesthetic appearance, but any basil would work. And basil is known to be a good companion for tomatoes as well as asparagus and peppers. Basil is known to enhance the flavor of tomatoes when they're planted close by. More importantly probably, however, it, it also repels white flies and also the asparagus beetle. So it performs a number of functions for us in the garden. Another workhorse is borage, and borage is another one of those plants that is used with a variety of different crops, um, particularly tomatoes, strawberries, and cucurbits. And one of the big pests that it's used to uh, deter is the tomato hornworm. Rosemary and sage are also commonly used uh, in the vegetable garden. They repel insect pests of beans, carrots, and also cabbage. Another good uh, herb for the vegetables are tansy. Tansy is great to plant with your cucurbits, uh, your squashes, and your um, cucumbers because it repels uh, the cucumber beetle, the squash bug, as well as ants. It also repels the rose beetle, so you can plant it by your roses as well. And it actually looks very beautiful in the ornamental gardening. Another a way that we can use companion planting is through what's called nurse crops and this is where we get some sort of physical or spatial benefit from planting two plants close together. So what you might think about is a tall crop like a tomato that can shade the plants behind it. Uh, we have another example of nurse cropping where we have oregano growing around the base of our tomatoes and tomatoes really need a nice even moisture Putting the oregano down, it creates a nice thick ground cover that helps retain soil moisture. Another thing we could do is provide a rich source of nectar in our gardens and that creates a refugia or a habitat for beneficial insects, uh, particularly predators and parasitoids that attack our garden pests. Uh, we utilize uh, parsley here in this garden, it's just about ready to flower and parsley has a very uh, dense flower head, a lot of little flowers that are rich in nectar. And that's a wonderful way um, to attract natural enemies to the garden. Uh, parsley also happens to repel asparagus beetles, so there's an added benefit there. Uh, yarrow is another great plant for its 
rich, rich nectaries. It's also very beautiful to have in the garden. And it has some other associated benefits as well. Yarrow is said to enhance the essential oils in herbs. So a lot of times you'll see it uh, planted in among the herbs to help improve the flavor. And a lot of gardeners use the leaves after the plants died back in the winter. They'll add it to their compost pile and use it as a, a compost, as a mulch, um, because it acts as a natural fertilizer in the garden. So a lot of kind of unusual uses for plants. Again, a lot of this knowledge is just handed down. It's known through observation and practice, um, not so much from scientific uh, exploration. A special form of companion planting is trap cropping. And we've demonstrated this in our vegetable garden where we planted a squash variety that was highly attractive to cucumber beetles next to our main crop as a way to draw the pest away from that crop. And what we're looking for in our trap crop is a plant that is more desirable than our main crop. And it might be a different variety of that same plant. It could be a completely different species or uh, just a younger plant. Sometimes the younger tissue is more desirable. So you might plant later as a way to create a trap crop. Um, one example we have here is the petunias. And this is a case where the trap crop just confuses the pest. And so we can use petunias among our asparagus and our tomatoes as well as our cucurbits. And what it does is it'll confuse aphids, leaf hoppers, uh, asparagus beetle and bean beetle and keep those from uh, causing such trouble on our crops. And we also have geraniums and geraniums are often planted with roses and grapes. In fact, if you go visit a vineyard, you'll see that these two plants are always planted at the vineyard uh, to help monitor for pests in the grapes. Uh, but what geraniums are good for is confusing Japanese beetles, leaf hoppers and other pests to those plants. Now remember, companion planting and trap cropping are just one of a large set of tools available to us in an integrated pest management program. But they're very easy to integrate into our gardening practices and certainly are a step in the right direction.